What's up everybody? You are watching the MSR Workshop. In today's video, we are doing a continuation of the video that I just released. If you haven't watched it, I will leave a link up above. But what it was about is I got sent a laser by a company called Longer, and they sent me the Longer Ray 5 watt diode laser. Now they have sent me the upgrade module for it, and this is their 10 watt module. And also, we're going to do an unboxing of the 10 watt module and the air assist that actually hooks up with that one. And now the five watt does not have an air assist that can be hooked up. The 10 watt on the other hand does. So we're gonna do that right now. Now the first part of this unboxing is just going ahead and disconnecting your previous laser head. And this is gonna be our five watt module. We are just gonna go ahead and back these set screws out completely. We'll set those to the side and two. So we can set that one aside. Next, unboxing the 10 watt module. It comes with a new focusing block and it looks like the focus is farther away than the previous one. But unboxing the 10 watt, there should be no modifications that you have to do to your machine other than hooking it up. So you can see a longer shield here, and this is where we are going to hook our air assist up to here. So the first thing we actually need to do is go ahead and unscrew these. I do like the fact that they added these little thumb screws instead of the other kind. Also, we're going to go ahead and need to take our bracket off because you'll need to use that on the new machine. So we are using the middle set of holes and it appears that our focal distance is increased because of this. So when we put it down here, this will give us our proper focal distance. Now, for some reason, if you get it and start cutting and it just has a huge spot on it, then you may need to adjust these because in the box, there is no instructions with it. So we are kind of just winging it here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the air assist or excuse me, the laser shroud off from around this because this is where we'll need to install our new air assist. Here is your focusing lens. If you ever need to clean it, this is where it is right here. And you'll notice that there's a brass insert here. The inside of this brass insert has threads on it and that's where we're actually gonna screw on our air assist. If you take a look at this one, if you've ever taken this one off, there's no threads on here. So it is impossible to mount an air assist. Now people can do their own custom air assist, but ones that just bolt right on the 10 watt and above work. Now, if you're curious of what wattage you have right here on the front, we say we have an optical power of, let's take a look. It says 10 to 11 watts, where it's somewhere should be like 10, 10.5 watts, because you, in theory, have two focused diode lasers in here, which are 5.5, usually 5.5 watts each. So we're looking at about 10 to 11 watts. So let's move these two aside. And let's open up our air assist module. 
Now the air assist on the 10 watt does not hook up to the board control of this particular machine. Now I believe they carry a 30 watt. The 30 watt is kind of cool because it actually plugs into the, the board up front and Lightburn can control whether to turn your air assist on or off automatically. Um, as far as I know, they're one of the only machines that does that. Don't quote me on that, but um, I've seen the other machines and I think they're all turned on manually by a switch. So being able to control it in Lightburn is kind of cool. This is the air assist pump that they send with you. This is 110 volt. It says rated power is 15 watts and the max flow is 30 liters per minute. So 30 liters per minute is the kind of the industry standard for most of the air assists sold um, aftermarket or online. Now you've got some goodies, you've got your tubing, you've got a little valve to turn it on or off. I don't see why you would ever want to use this because you're going to want to use the max amount of air and a lot of times people will find that it's still not enough air and they may want to add an air compressor instead of this little air pump here which will deliver a lot more CFM and air than this thing will. But here is your little air assist head, kind of a cute little guy. You've got a little rubber gasket that goes in here. And so all you're really going to do is just thread it back on. Now the one thing is this you will not be able to use this existing shroud, take this off. Uh, keep it in case you ever want to use it or sell it, but you will no longer need this part. Then once you're done, you're going to go ahead and put your guard back in place. Now you'll need to position it some way so the head of your machine, where the tubing is, is going to come off the back. Now you can slide this back on with our fun little set screws. So now we are done. Now we just put this back on our machine. And last but not least, just plug your laser connector cord on top and we are done. Now we're going to go ahead and connect our tubing and power it on. We'll just go ahead and plug it in on the back, route this off to the side because really this just plugs into here. Now if you want to use this, you just cut a small piece of tubing, put one in here and then one on the other side and connect it to there. But we're not going to use that, so we're just going to slide that right on there. And now we're going to go ahead and plug it in. So it is not the quietest thing in the world. And one thing you want to watch out for is this guy here is your air inlet. Normally you'd have a filter here, so if you put this on a bunch of sawdust or somewhere where it's real dirty and sucks it all up in here, it's going to suck it up into the motor. So just watch out for that guy right there. There is not a on off switch on this either, so it's either plugged in and on or off. So let's go ahead and plug this in to light burn and go ahead and see what it can do. So connecting this laser is going to be the same process as you did for the 5 watt. You're going to hit the button that says devices, detect devices, and then you're going to pick gerbil controller. Now I have named this the longer uh, 10 watt laser, but uh, like I said, it's going to be the exact same connection process. Now we cut this type of material with about 80% power last time. So that was a five watt laser. So in essence, 50% on this would be 100% on the other one, if you're following me. So let's try and do some cutting to start with. So for our first test today, we are gonna try some 2.5 millimeter MDF style board that I enjoy cutting a lot. And we're gonna start at the equivalent settings we used before on the two millimeter plywood that we cut in the last video. I'm gonna go at 
two millimeters a second at 30% power, which would be equivalent to 80% power on our five watts. So let's give that a shot. That cut beautifully. See if I can get that to focus here. No charring looks really good. And that was took a total of one minute to cut that out. So for the next thing we're going to try, we're going to try something a little bit more fun. So let's go ahead and draw a circle and I'm going to use shift and draw a circle and this is on a Mac computer but I have a PC keyboard so go figure right. And now I'm going to have some text. I'm going to say have a great day. And a little exclamation mark. So I want to be able to fit this text inside this circle and then we're going to laser this whole thing out. Just kind of a zone of those little challenge coins. So we're going to zoom in here and a new feature on Lightburn is this little blue dot. If you hover over that and drag, now we can curve our text. So I'm just going to keep curving it until I'm able to fit it inside there. Now one thing I may want to do to begin with is just make my circle a little bit bigger. Then I can stuff this inside and then shrink the whole thing together. So that looks pretty good. Now let's just highlight the whole thing. And now we can shrink her down. So same power settings, we're going to go at two millimeters a second at 30% power. That seemed to cut beautifully on this 2.5 millimeter MDF style wood. And let's just see. I want that just kind of sitting around the edge of that. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. There's more you could do to it. Now let's do one more thing. Let's add a border around it. And we are going to do that. We're going to add, we're going to grab this other one. We're going to do one more. There we go. So now I've got three rings. I'm just going to highlight the inner two. Let's do that. Highlight the inner two. Now I'm going to group those together and we're going to change the color and we're going to do fill. So we're going to fill at, let's do 100 millimeters a second and we'll stick to 30% power. See what that does. Outer line is going to be our cut line. Have a great day. And we're going to grab an image from my desktop, which is a heart. And we're going to right click and we're going to hit trace image. And I'm going to increase this threshold until these little purple lines are over all of the stuff that I want to use. 
hit OK and it's going to delete the background. Now I have a nice little heart. to put in the middle and we're also going to fill that one. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got. So here is our little coin. All the letters came out perfect. My engraving, I could have done it a bit darker. I wasn't for sure. But the depth on it actually is pretty good. See the edges, even though they're dark, there's really no soot that comes off. So very, very impressive at only a 30% power at two millimeters a second. This did excellent. Well guys, that's it for this first video of the longer Ray 510 watt laser. So let's talk about some final thoughts. So I was really impressed of the power level and how cleanly it cut. You saw the lines, you saw that um, there really wasn't any scorching at the power settings that I used. Uh, 30 watt seemed to be perfect for that MDF material, which if any of you have ever cut that stuff before, you know it's quite difficult to cut sometimes. It doesn't like to cut, it likes to burn. Uh, the air assist seemed to work really well. But in the future videos, we are going to be diving more into this machine and what it can really do. Over the next four weeks, we are going to be pushing this machine and hopefully coming up with some neat and fun new projects that you can try on your laser. Now, if you want to know more about the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser, you can look at the link below. Now, would I buy this machine over the 5 watt in the previous video that I did? Absolutely, for a few more dollars this machine can do substantially more cutting, more engraving, it's faster, and it does a lot more and has a lot more potential, which we'll look at in the future videos. But for the money, I would definitely go with this machine, especially since that you can hook up Air Assist with this as an aftermarket option. If you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, be sure and leave them below. And please don't forget to hit the bell and the thumbs up button because I will be dropping a bunch of new videos this coming few weeks. Thanks so much, guys.